It seems like uh, some of us have been here for quite a while already, but I want to welcome everybody else who just got here recently, and also welcome to those who might be watching us on YouTube at some time during the week. We're glad that you're all with us. Uh, it's a joy to get here early and hear all the rehearsing going on by our wonderful worship leadership team, which you know has a number of people that sometimes try to kind of rotate in and rotate out. We're happy to have John at the piano. Uh, he fills in beautifully. And I'm especially thankful, thankful for the song that will be sung during communion. So listen carefully to that one. It's been a pretty popular contemporary Christian song recently, and maybe to a few years back. You know, cry out to Jesus, come to Jesus, he has dance with Jesus. I like all those verses of that song. So, thanks for being with us. And our first song is America the Beautiful, a good patriotic one. So stand as you are able and sing joyfully about our wonderful country.
and mercy reshape the world. Mold us into a people who welcome your word and serve one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. It surely is a time to be praising. Uh, praising God for the wonderful variety of music that we have that can start out rather stately and patriotic and end up with that tremendous beat that we had in that, in that last time. I love them all, so thank you music leaders. You add so much to the life of our worship. <coughs> Let me start out our time of praise. Uh, pretty much the month of June, I, I traveled 6,500 miles in my little red car with my dog, Bertie, and I, I passed through 21 different states. I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of cars and trucks I passed on the highways, but when you stop and think about it, there's a lot of danger out there on the highway. When you're out there a lot, you realize really the grace it is that you can go through a long trip like that not only enjoy it, but be able to get through it without a ticket, or without an accident, or without any real mishaps. So uh, I praise God for the wonderful trip that I had. I hope many of you are able to do some traveling, uh, maybe over the 4th, or maybe stay home over the 4th. Uh, so I hope that you'll have some good times celebrating our nation's birthday. So who else would like to share something this morning? Yes, share it. My cousin Holly has been trying to liquidate some assets to help her with her medical <clears throat> expenses and general expenses. She had a truck that was for sale. So we got a buyer from Los Angeles, and on Friday he loaded up his trailer and his truck and was coming up to pick up a pickup truck from Holly. On his way, he ran across a family whose car had broken down on the great line. He put their car and all of them into his truck, well, truck and trailer, and drove them home to Bakersfield before proceeding up the So that's really a praise. And, and plus, she sold the truck to him. Okay. Well, thanks for sharing that. That's wonderful. Okay. Yes, Kate? I'd like to welcome Cindy back. We have been a long time since we've seen her. Yes. You've been in our prayers a lot, Cindy. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yes. Well, speaking of the power of prayer, many of you may know it is in your July announcement. Janice Phillips cancer is taking a turn from the worst. And so there are two cards going around. You only need to sign one. I was hoping there would be a lot of people here, and you all looked up to my faith in you. So I didn't think you all your signatures would fit on one card. So please sign one of the cards. I know some of you are leaving right after church, so it should get through here during the service, and I checked with the uh, pastor. And just keep Janice in your prayers. That um, It's a time, that the, and her family is being able to come out. I heard that Rebecca was just out from Tennessee, <coughs> early in June, but she's scheduled to come back again um, within the next two weeks, so um, it's just a real time that they really do need your prayers, both Janice and Christopher. They've been such wonderful leaders in our church, Dean and Janice. Yes, Suzanne. First of all, welcome back, especially after you passed thousands of cars on the road in your little red <laughs> car. But, uh, boy, talk about the power of prayer. Um, two weeks ago, Chuck had um, a heart attack. And it was, um, in the grand scheme of things, mild. I want you to know that Knee Memorial um, ER, I think, saved his life. And uh, they triaged him to the point where he could be transferred uh, to San Jose. And um, there was a cardiologist that just happened to be at the hospital that day. And he did surgery on Chuck, and then later on we ended up having a pacemaker too. But Chuck wanted to be here today, but um, he just he said.
said my emotions are so close to the surface that I, I just please tell everybody I felt your prayers and I felt your support and um, he's doing great. So thank you all. I need it. Many of you have been visited by Jehovah's Witness, I'm sure. And yesterday afternoon, first of all, I went, yesterday morning, I went to a cell with my husband where I thought I'd have to take him to the hospital. He's going down fast. And uh, I had plans. I had to call Joanna. I had to call Ed and tell him that he wouldn't be able to go where we were going. He rallied after breakfast and was great. So he recovered beautifully. I was really excited about that. But then about noon, these two young people knocked on my door. You know how hot it was yesterday. Mm -hmm. Two young people had a very hot, hotter than that on my front porch. And they knocked on my door and they were making the rounds, inviting people to a Jehovah's Witness convention, which is going to be held in Bakersfield. Well, I invited them in. Normally I would say, no, I'm not interested, or I already am a Lutheran, I'm fine. And it was just too hot for them to stay on the porch. So they came in to just get cool, which was great. And I said, okay, now tell me what you want. And they said, We'd like to invite you to our Jehovah's Witness Convention in Bakersfield, and the topic is patience. And I thought, of all day, I looked at them and I said, of all day, this is the day I need that. Is it going to be online? <laughs> um, but it wasn't. It's, you have to go to the convention. But we had such a wonderful conversation. The young lady told me her name three times, and on the third time it took. I don't know about you guys, but I'm not going to remember her name. Her name was Freya which is the name of my niece, my grandniece. And those are the only two Freyas I know of, so I could relate to her, I haven't forgotten her. They were just delightful people. They go to the Jehovah's Temple in, in Greenfield and invited me to come. But what was interesting to me was how that topic was what I needed right at that time. And in they walked. So I, I think that's a crazy moment. Yeah. You never know who might be the messenger of God's Absolutely. prayers. Then I'll call on Suzanne for a children's message. Kids of all ages can listen. Ellie, can you go with me for the children's message? Oh, thank you so much. My oh. Bring her track. Okay. Come with me. I need some help today. Okay. The other kid has to go with her. <laughs> So today we're all going to be children here. Oh, thank you for coming, Ellie. So um, we have been talking a lot about hearts uh, at our house, <laughs> in the hospitals. And I have to tell you, I sat for a week and stared at the monitor for the heartbeats. And I can tell you that when the heartbeats are very slow, that's not good. When they're very high, that's not good either. <laughs> so it takes a lot to make the heartbeat exactly what it should do. And you know, God gave us this heart because we have to, something, it's like the engine of our body. And it has to go, and go, and go, and go, and do the right things. But Ellie, can you, would you like to hold the heart for a minute? Okay, perfect. Okay. So, um, I was thinking about all the ways that we depend on our hearts, or there are these emotions that come from our heart. We can be angry in our heart, and that's not any fun. We can be loving in our heart, and that's wonderful. Um, sometimes people will say, oh, I'm so sad in my heart, and that's not very much fun either. But um, God really wants us to have a heart for everything, and especially for him. So I thought, um, all right, I'm gonna go through the bulletin today, and I'm going to see if the word heart is in our bulletin. Well, the first song is a patriotic song. It does not have heart in the song, 
But oftentimes, when we talk about patriotism, we do this, right? Okay. Then we went to the song of Lord of all hopefulness. And bless in our hearts, Lord. Strength in our heart, Lord. Oh, I'm sorry. Bliss. I want to go back and say that word right because I have never heard of bliss in my heart. And do you think that is just a great phrase or what? Bliss. I love that. Then there's strength in our heart. There's love in our heart. And that's in Lord of all hopefulness. Then we went to holiness, take my life. So take my heart and form it. Three times we sang that. Take my heart and form it, God. So that our heart is for him. And then in the second reading, which we haven't done yet, there is the obedient heart. <laughs> She's reading. I think she knows what the word obedient means. <laughs> and then I thought this was interesting. In the last song, Your Grace is Enough, it said, You wrestle with the sinner's restless heart. Have you ever wrestled with anything in your heart? Because you're just not sure how to how you should handle it. And then there's the restless heart of being not unsure, not sure where you should go. You know, um, I have to say that my heart has been really open this last couple of weeks. It's been open by all of you and the the cards and the texts and the emails and the phone calls and everything that I knew that was happening to make my heart better and to especially make Chuck's heart better. And he is wrestling right now with what he calls second chances. And everybody needs a second chance. And I just encourage you to open your heart and find ways to love others. And I love this because it says, you and me. And you and me can be you and me. It could be Ellie and me. It could be Chuck and me. And it could be God and me. So thank you for sharing my heart story today. Thank you, Ellie. Ellie, would you like to take this with you? It's yours if you want it. It's the heart for the truck. <laughs> Thank you, Ellie. Did you see how easily she got up? <laughs>
chapter 6, verse 12 through 23. Do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourself to God and those who have been brought from death to life, and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means! Do not know, do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves to the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness or sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things of which you now are ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Alex. <clears throat> Thank you, Ellie. <clears throat> the lessons cover it all, don't they? <clears throat> Our gospel, which is so much a gospel of grace, and of course Paul in Romans reminding us of all that all that, that we turn away from. The Holy Gospel is written in the 10th chapter of Matthew's Gospel, beginning at verse 40. Please stand as you are able. <laughs> Jesus said to the twelve, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. Whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. <clears throat> This short gospel that I just read is not well known, but it's great, it's powerful, it's full of grace. Jesus is finishing up a time of special training for his disciples so he can send them out with the word. He teaches them their mission and he promises them blessing. He starts off this little passage with a tremendous affirmation of his disciples. He says, whoever welcomes you welcomes me. Whoever welcomes you is welcoming me, Jesus says. Isn't that a tremendous affirmation? If you're a Christian, then Jesus gives you that same affirmation. When someone welcomes you, they are welcoming Jesus. For two reasons. First of all, when someone welcomes you, they are welcoming Jesus because, first of all, as a follower of Jesus, you represent Jesus. But secondly, I like, I list, I like this second reason much better. When someone welcomes you, 
they're welcoming Jesus because Jesus is in you. Every follower of Jesus has Jesus in them. What an honor it is to have Jesus inside our heart and our mind and our body. Another amazing thing is that we come to Jesus with so little and Jesus gives us so much. One of my heroes in Christian songwriting is John Fisher. And John Fisher speaks of the great exchange. He says, we give Jesus our weak and sputtering faith and he gives us his strength and his spirit. We lay our sins on him and he gives us his perfect righteousness. God always gives us much more than we ever can give to God. It's like the little that we give to God is like a key that turns a lock, that opens a huge safe that is full of God's treasure. All our faith does is turn the key and God opens the storehouse of blessing. Like someone said, you can never outgive God. And after Jesus affirms his disciples, including us 21st century disciples, by saying that if uh, someone welcomes us, they're welcoming him, he goes on to say that if you welcome a prophet, you receive the prophet's blessing. Maybe you don't consider yourselves a prophet, but if you welcome a prophet, you get the same reward the prophet gets. Sounds kind of weird, doesn't it? You know, it comes back to this idea that when someone represents a king, they get respect because they're representing the king. When the president sends out an ambassador, the ambassador gets respect because that ambassador represents the president and the United States. So in that way, we can share in the reward of the one who sends us. One of the most righteous persons that I ever knew was Russell Johnson. Russell Johnson had a doctorate from Princeton University in theology. Uh, he went over to Madagascar and served for 30 years. Wow. Even wrote textbooks in the Malagasy language for the seminary. And then when he retired after 30 years over there, we were blessed to have him come and live in Salinas. And as soon as we could, we nabbed him <laughs> to be our, our visitation pastor. One of the things he did was uh, train a lot of people to be the ones who would take out communion to the shut-ins. And he had a tremendous course that he prepared for those people. And uh, Pastor Johnson, to me, was the greatest saint I've ever known. But Jesus is telling me that if I welcomed Pastor Johnson into my pulpit, or into my home, or into my study, I will receive the same reward that Pastor Johnson receives. You see where I get that theme today? Little gifts, but big rewards. It's a very small gift, the gift of a welcome, the gift of hospitality. But to give that small gift is to get a reward of the one to whom you gave the gift. And then Jesus mentions in an even smaller gift that we might give. And he promises a reward for giving this tiny little gift. He said, if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones, he will not lose his reward. Now the little ones here that you might give a cup of water to are not only children, but any ordinary disciple, adult or child. They're not a prophet or a saint. <clears throat> They're nobody special, just, just ordinary folk. But God loves them. They're his children. When you show them hospitality, 
or give them a cup, a cup of water, you will receive a reward. And as Jesus said in Matthew 25, as you've done it for the least of one of, the, of these members of my family, you did it for me. So where does all this welcoming and showing hospitality begin? It doesn't begin with you and me. It begins with God. It begins in the Garden of Eden when God invited Adam and Eve to drink the cool water there and to eat the fruit of the garden. God said to Adam and Eve, Welcome to my garden, and here is food and drink for you. God welcomed the newcomers into his garden and offered them food. And when mankind had strayed away from God, God sent his one and only son into the world to welcome his lost children back into fellowship with him. And Jesus extended hospitality to all who were lost and said, come to me and I will give you rest. We would all be strangers to God, but God reached out to us and drew us to himself. God in Christ has welcomed us and given us a cup of cold water in holy baptism and fed us spiritual food in holy communion. Sometimes we choose to walk away from God. As John Yulfusacker said in his hymn, Morning Cry, we wander off to find where demons dwell. But the Good Shepherd is always out seeking us when we're lost, urging us to come home. And when we come home, our Savior welcomes us with open arms, as that father welcomed his prodigal son who had squandered his inheritance in a far country. And when God welcomes us back, after we've strayed from him, he gives us forgiveness of sins, new life, and eternal salvation. And he gives us a church home and a church family. And here in our church, hospitality is one of our primary priorities. Because God welcomed us when we had wandered off. Now we welcome anybody who might wander into our church. And we show no partiality because God shows no partiality. We love because God first loved us. We welcome the stranger because at one time or another, we were the stranger. And we remember how good it felt to be welcomed. We offer a cup of coffee because there was a person one time who offered a cup of coffee to us. The Bible is full of encouragement to welcome strangers and show hospitality. How about that story of Abraham who entertained these strangers and it turned out they were angels that he was entertaining. St. Paul in Romans 10, 13 says, extend hospitality to strangers. And in 1 Timothy, he tells us that a bishop must be, among other things, hospitable. When we five kids in my family, growing up on the farm in Illinois, had all left home, my parents uh, became part of a program of welcoming little kids from inner city Chicago to come out and live on the farm for a week or two and get a taste of a a much better life than that they were going through. And my mother was once again cooking for a large group instead of like she had been with five kids growing up. Now when she could just be cooking for my dad and her. And by the way, those little kids from that inner city church were black. I remember when Joyce and I and our two kids, Nathan and Aaron, went uh, back to Illinois to celebrate Joyce's parents' 50, 50th wedding anniversary. There wasn't even room for everybody in the house. We had to bring our tent and pitch it up out on the lawn, but it was a wonderful time of shared hospitality in the family. But that kind of family hospitality is easy. 
It's not as easy to welcome strangers. But when it comes to hospitality in the church, we are called to reach out and show hospitality, not just to our friends and family, but also to strangers. A church consultant was hired to help a struggling church that had been in decline for about 20 years. At the first meeting of the consultant, the people of the church were asked to list the church's strengths. Well, Ed raised his hand and said that he found the people in the church to be very friendly. Everyone in church is friends, said Ed, and everybody nodded in agreement. Julie told about how in the narthex before church, why people were having a great time talking with each other. Again, everybody nodded in agreement. Then the consultant told them that every church views itself as a friendly church. He said that even some of the coldest churches think that they're really friendly. He said they have to practice radical hospitality, making sure the stranger and the first time visitor is made to feel welcome. What would that consultant say if he visited our church? I think he'd say we're pretty friendly. But would he see any stranger, maybe kind of off by themselves, not being in a conversation group, or maybe someone in the sanctuary after church, or in the narthex, or, or downstairs, would he spot anybody standing by themselves? I don't think he would. I hope that it will all be very careful to spot that person that might be a visitor or a stranger. We don't know what they're going through. Maybe they wandered into our church because they really are in special need. Let's be sure our eyes are open to welcome the stranger. Pastor Ray Osborne tells about a woman named Pauline who attended an inner city church in downtown Dayton. She was, according to Osborne, damaged goods. Pauline lived in a shelter down the street from the church. She came, became a real test of hospitality for that congregation. She smelled of urine and sweat sometimes coming to church, but she showed up in church every Sunday. You could tell by her loud voice when she entered the building. She sat in the front where nobody could miss her. Some made sure they didn't sit right next to her. But there were many in the church who were glad to have Pauline's presence. One of them, a wise old council member, said, Pauline is Christ's gift to us. He meant it in the sense that Pauline was the kind of person whom Jesus would reach out to. This council member was always one of the first to greet Pauline with welcoming words and a handshake. Pauline often tried the patience of the people of the little church, even that council member who was her friend. She stayed for coffee hour every Sunday, sometimes interrupting people's conversations, and she always stuffed her pockets full of cookies. Pauline often asked to sing a solo in church, Usually they just say, well, someday, but that someday did come around once in a while, and occasionally they let her sing her solo, the same solo she sang every time, My Jesus, I Love Thee. Her voice wasn't the greatest, but her sincerity could not be denied. The second verse of that song took on new meaning for people when she sang, I love thee because thou hast first loved me. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, tis not. Pauline was indeed Christ's gift to that church. And they learned to give a cup of cold water to this little one. We had a little one at Hope Lutheran in Tascadero when I was the interim there. His name was Terry Silva. He had some special needs. Sometimes it was difficult for me to get my act together before the 8 o'clock service because he wanted to talk to me about the, the latest things that he was doing. A 
but Terry became the regular acolyte at our early service at Hope. The people of Hope were kind and hospitable to him, and we missed him when he moved away. God sends little ones to us, like Pauline was sent to her congregation, and like Terry was sent to Hope. I don't know which little ones God has sent or will send to us here at Grace, but I know it's our honor to welcome them when they come. They too are children of God. When we welcome them, we're welcoming Jesus. When we give a cup of cold water to one of the least of these, we're passing on to them the love that Jesus has given to us. It's our joy our privilege and our duty to welcome strangers and to give a cup of water to the little ones that God sends our way. Amen. Now we're going to sing a very, very special song. Your grace is enough. Grace is a great name for a church. <laughs> grace is what we all depend upon. And it is enough. You're going to love singing this one.
if we can, and stand and uh, together share our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Excuse me. Getting horses is worth it if you get to sing such great songs. <laughs> it was good to hear the testimonies of a, a lot of answers to prayer during our praise moments. Let us turn to God in prayer. Dear God, we pray that you will touch our hearts. <laughs> Help us to not so much seek your blessings, but to seek to be a blessing to others. Help us to give to those who cannot give much in return. Help us to love as you have loved us. Help us to love the little ones who have little to give in return. Thank you, God, for our great nation and all the blessings that we're able to enjoy by those who work so hard to set this nation up. Thank you for those who laid their lives on the line and gave their lives, many of them, to preserve our freedoms and our nation. So God bless our nation's celebration of our birthday. Bless all of our Fourth of July celebrations and we pray for, pray for safety during the time of travel and the time of fireworks and so on. We pray for Brian Bessemer in the hospital, right next door. Help him to be healed, get stronger each day, and bless Janet as well. We thank you, God, for the wonderful love and ministry of Dave and Janice Phillips among us. Be with her in her ongoing battles, and be with her now as she enters under the special care of hospice. We commend her to your keeping. And we thank you for Chuck Krause's successful surgeries. Thank you that he even now is praising you for how you brought him through this time of, of, of danger. And bless Suzanne too. And we pray for the time when Chuck can once again be with us. And thank you for the wonderful blessing of a new liver for Rita Tavernetti. Thank you that the procedure went well. We pray, we pray for ongoing help for her. We pray healing and strength for Carmen Gonzalez's daughter, Annette, who has had a stroke. We pray for healing and strength for newborn baby Jack Tucker, son of Jessica and Jared Tucker, and grandson of Mike and Becca Howard. We pray for Randy Handley for uh, improvement of the care of his heart. We pray for Susan King, recently diagnosed with cancer. We pray for Holly Thompson. Mary Ballinger. We pray for all who are suffering from pain, prolonged term illnesses. Father, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now I invite you to open your hearts in confession. 
and receiving of forgiveness. Do you have those prayers for us, Bill? No, they're not on the slides. Today. Okay. Okay, you just listen and I will lead the prayer. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sins to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that attended to your word may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sin through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, remember me. Heavenly Father, we come to your table this morning because we need this special blessing of your body and blood poured out on the cross for us. May it help make real to us that our sins are truly forgiven because of your love and because of your death on the cross. We open our hearts now as you feed us. In Jesus' name. Please come forward and we get to hear that wonderful message and song as we come in.
let that sink in and be communion to the rest of the choir. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen and keep you in his grace. Peace be with all of you. Amen. Now we share what's happening in the church. Anita, are you leading? Okay. So please join us downstairs for a time of fellowship and food after church. You are all welcome. Uh, Women's Grace is not meeting tomorrow night. We are having a brief meeting today right after church once you get your snacks. So please join us. Uh, we just have a little bit of business to do. Uh, and Women's Grace is continuing our backpack project. So please feel free. There are envelopes in the narthex and lists of supplies if you would like to donate. We will be packing the backpack. It's the first Monday in August here at church and we can use all the help we can. So please consider joining us for that. And Food Pantry is still collecting cereal, so when you get a chance, bring us a box of cereal. We appreciate it. And I know people who wait in line every Friday appreciate the cereal as well. Thank you so much for all your support. Okay. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing, let there be peace on earth. Stand for the closing song. Thank you.
peace, Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.